A fairly repetitive weather pattern this week across Texas, but one that will feature daily chances for severe thunderstorms along the sloshing dry line in the Panhandle in West Texas. How far east will those storms make it every night? Now that's a good question, one we're going to talk about in today's edition of the Texas Weather Roundup. Good morning, I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. It is Monday, the 22nd of May, 2023. We're heading back into a more typical late spring slash early summer weather pattern across Texas this week, and one that's not going to change a whole lot, but at least one. Uh, we're not dealing with April-type weather in terms of spinny-spinny doom-dooms everywhere. And two, we're also not dealing with August-type weather where it's 105 for the next three months. So at least we actually have something to talk about and one that will bring rain to areas that are still in severe to exceptional drought and need the rain. So that's the good news. Short story. Southeastern half of Texas, outside of some coastal showers and storms maybe this afternoon, uh, it's not going to be a wet week. It's going to be dry, warm, humid, fairly Normal for late May as we start heading into the early summer. Western half to northwestern half of Texas, things are going to be a little more dynamic, and that's what we're going to talk about now. Let's head on over to the Severe Weather Outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. We're just going to start with today. The best possibility for scattered severe storms, about a 1 in 6 chance, is going to be across the eastern two-thirds of the Texas Panhandle, down I-27 into west Texas, the Rolling Plains... Uh, the southern plains into northwest Texas, coming off that cap rock into the northwestern big country. That's where the highest chance for scattered supercellular thunderstorms will exist this afternoon into early this evening. And then farther south along the dry line into far eastern New Mexico, down into the Permian Basin and southwest Texas into the eastern sections of Big Bend National Park. The potential for more isolated thunderstorm development this afternoon, but still those storms, if they pop, could be severe with large hail damaging straight line winds up to 70 miles an hour and especially with storms in the eastern half of the panhandle from about 5 p.m to 10 p.m this evening a non-zero threat of a tornado we do not expect a widespread tornado threat today but if we have any discrete supercellular thunderstorms still underway from near sunset towards about 10 o'clock we may see a slight uptick in tornado potential as the low-level winds increase and we see cloud bases begin to decrease as surface heating starts to decrease with the loss of daylight heating daylight heating yeah something about that made sense and then as we head into this evening we're going to see a complex of stormies fire up let's take a look at the high-res rapid refresh model for this evening we'll let it play out real quick and we're going to start on over isolated to scattered development of storms eastern new mexico far west texas into the panhandle west texas mid to late afternoon generally after 2 p.m so we head into the mid-evening hours we're going to see probably one or two clusters of storms organized from the initial storms and that cluster of storms will then begin propagating off to the southeast with a threat of damaging winds out of the strongest storms maybe some pocket change size hail heavy rainfall we could get some pretty good rains out of that where that cluster of storms forms and of course cloud to ground lightning those storms will tend to probably propagate along in south along the red river moving southeast at about 30 miles an hour and they'll begin weakening as we get close to midnight but we could still see remnant storms continue all the way towards sunrise on tuesday as they make their way towards interstate 35 across portions of central southern oklahoma into north texas this is going to be one of these situations where we're just going to have to see how far these storms can make it before they die out completely but it is entirely plausible we have a little bit of rain in the metroplex for the morning commute tomorrow the highest severe weather threat again as we take a look at the severe weather outlook from the storm prediction center for today and tonight is generally west of a line from wichita falls to san angelo east of that yes we could see storms late tonight into tuesday morning but the threat for severe weather would be decreasing as the storm's intensity decreases all right let's move to tuesday afternoon into tuesday evening i said this is going to be repetitive and yeah it's going to be a bit repetitive we're going to be doing it again this time our focus is going to be the southern texas panhandle eastern sections of the uh, rolling plains and southern plains into northwest texas the big country and portions of west central texas so a little further southeast than today the potential there for again scattered supercellular thunderstorms to fire up during the mid-afternoon hours the potential for large hail localized damaging winds maybe a tornado 
in addition to cloud to ground lightning and heavy rainfall. And just like tonight, we're going to see those storms organize into a mesoscale convective system, MCS, that's a fancy term for a cluster of storms or a squall line, that'll then propagate off to the southeast late Tuesday evening into Wednesday morning. This one may make it a bit further east with a bit more intensity. Uh, model data is a wee bit in disagreement on that, and I'll show you some of those solutions here in a minute, but again, the threat for severe storms may continue into North Texas early Wednesday morning, mainly in the form of some damaging outflow winds. All right, let's take a look at the high-rise rapid refresh model for tomorrow into tomorrow night. You can see storms fire up mid-afternoon West Texas, but then fire up into a big old cluster of storms off the high-rise rapid refresh model, and again, this is out towards the extended range of this model's run, so... Yeah, we'll see how well it does. But again, you can see this run for tomorrow has a more impressive cluster of storms, a fairly well-organized bow echo that moves off to the southeast more quickly, would move into the DFW Metroplex and portions of Interstate 35 down into north central Texas by 1 a.m. Wednesday, compared to tonight's storms, which will be far less intense by the time they reach I-35, if this model is correct, and closer to 5 a.m., so again, if storms end up becoming more organized, something called a rear inflow jet essentially gives them some extra oomph to push them along that could enhance the damaging wind potential, but also allow these storms to move east more quickly and maintain their intensity a bit longer. So that would increase the severe weather threat into portions of north central Texas tomorrow night. Now, you might be able to tell, I'm not saying that's going to happen for sure, and here's why. Here is a look at the North American model. You can see it's slower with thunderstorm evolution tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. It does have storms making it into, again, I-35, central Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma, north Texas, and Texoma, but it has it closer to 5 a.m. Wednesday, and would have a weakening line of storms. Still some storms with heavy rain, small hail, gusty winds, but clearly not to the scope of what the high-rise rapid refresh model was showing with the scary bow echo of doom and widespread damaging winds and all sorts of chaos that would give my head a headache. But you know what? We're just going to have to wait and see. It certainly is not out of the question. We see a more organized cluster of storms tomorrow night. Uh, or any night this week, to be honest, given the uh, overall weather pattern aloft, those, that northwest flow coming on in, and that helping to push storms off to the southeast. We don't have a whole lot of wind shear aloft. We will have plenty of instability, and that will support these nighttime thunderstorm complexes. We kind of, We deal with these sometimes during the early summer months in Texas. Not every year, but I can think of a few years, about 10 years ago, where we dealt with clusters of storms just like this that would roll in from Colorado, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and just roll on in every night into portions of northwest Texas, Texoma, the big country, all sorts of damaging winds, even spin-up tornadoes. So, I mean, it happens. It's just not something we've seen in recent years on a multi-day basis, but at the same time... If this is how we can get rid of some of the drought across the panhandle, West Texas, into the big country, Northwest Texas, hey, I'm all for it. Uh, in terms of forecast rain totals over the next five days, 7 a.m. this morning through 7 a.m. Friday, you can see we are expecting a pretty good boatload of rain across portions of the Texas panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, down to the big country, Western North Texas, anywhere from one to four inches of rain on average. Some folks would see far less, unfortunately. Some folks could see more if they end up under heavier storms multiple nights in a row but again certainly the potential to fill up ponds get those bar ditches full and then overflowing and then create some uh road hazards and hey we may even see localized flooding out of this depending on just how much rain a few locations get but hey w this area needs it i am all for this if this is how we're gonna start killing some of the drought and the fact we're doing it here in late may let's do it i'm all for it bring on the lightning bring on the storms i'll sit out there in a field at 2 a.m taking lightning pictures for all i care the downside to all this is the mosquitoes are going to be horrendous here in a week or two but you just got to deal with what you got to deal with. And again, this weather pattern we're expecting is going to remain relatively constant. Uh, we're going to see this probably play out again Thursday, Friday, Saturday, maybe even Sunday. Although chances for rain and storms w do look to expand further south into the Permian Basin, southwest Texas, maybe the Edwards Plateau, Concho Valley after Thursday or on or around Thursday onward into the weekend. So again, we're going to be dealing with this for a while on a daily basis. But 
hey, you know what? It sure beats being 110 with no water. All right, in terms of temperatures over the next couple of days, we're not going to see a lot of changes in either the high temperatures or low temperatures, but the general trend will be a warming trend as we get towards Saturday. Here's today, generally speaking, upper 70s in the panhandle down into the low 90s across the Permian Basin, South Texas, get into Tuesday. Bump it up a couple of degrees, temperature 70s in the panhandle where we're going to have some cloud cover. Otherwise, expect upper 80s to low to mid 90s. Again, that's about where we should be for late May. Yes, it's warm, but it's also getting towards summertime in Texas. If it's not 105 already, let's be thankful. And then here is Wednesday. You can actually see a bit cooler as we have the increased possibility of a longer lived complex of thunderstorms moving southeast into portions of northwest Texas, Texoma, North Texas, bringing outflow and some cloud cover, at least for portions of the day Wednesday. As we head into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we're going to to see the chance for storms continue, but each day's storm chances may shift a bit depending on the prior day's evolution, and that will influence temperatures. But as a whole, we're expecting high temperatures by Saturday across the state of Texas to generally be in the upper 80s to middle 90s. So it'll be warm, but not ridiculously hot for this time of year. And of course, where we have any sort of increased storm chances, so temperatures may be just a little too high. In terms of low temperature forecasts, actually it's going to be pretty nice for the first few days this week. 50s in the Panhandle, 60s center tier of Texas, 70s near the coast, South Texas. We're going to bump that up a degree or two every night over this coming week. So by the weekend, we're generally going to be averaging 60s and 70s for low temperatures across the state. So kind of where we should be, but it could, again, be far worse, especially if we were dealing with a very strong drought year or it already switched into a summer weather pattern like, well, last year, a few years ago, stuff like that. So uh, let's be thankful for what we have and be thankful for the fact we are going to have at least continuing rain chances. And in the long range out through the end of May into early June, I'm not seeing strong indications that we're going to have that summer heat dome build in yet. So we may keep up with this kind of weather pattern for a while, or we may, who knows, switch back into even more of a spring-like weather pattern as we get into late May, early June. We're just going to have to wait and see, especially with El Nino kicking in pretty quick. Either way, if we can get through summer without going into another big drought, I will be a happy Baldy and Chief. And speaking of which, you can keep an eye on the sky with the Free Texas Storm Chasers interactive weather radar available in the Free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. We have two radars. If you don't like the first, you can just click on the dot 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 more button and that will take you to the zoom radar. That's our old radar. And we also have that radar on our website, texasstormchasers.com slash radar. We'll have chasers out and about every day this week, beginning today, and we'll be here for live severe weather coverage if it is necessary. I hope it won't be, but hey, if it is, we'll be here, and you can watch our live storm chasing video on the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app, website, and by following us, Texas Storm Chasers, on YouTube. Y'all have a great Monday. We'll have the next Texas Weather Roundup out by 7 a.m. Tuesday. Have a great Monday. God bless.